With the reveal of the new Shinjutsu name, such techniques have become very hyped up amongst the fanbase. Anything construed as a technique formed by the Otsutsuki clan is questioned as a Shinjutsu, and among these are the obvious, the Dojutsu. The various Dojutsu possess abilities that seem to cross borders from Jutsu into miraculous techniques, techniques that almost seem like miracles. The most obvious of these being the Rinnegan, a technique named after reincarnation. But among the Rinnegan's abilities are the likes of resurrection, gravity control, and soul manipulation. But it continues to move back as the Mongekyo Sharingan and its eternal variant use such techniques. The eternal flames of the Amaterasu, the supposedly unbreakable Genjutsu Tsukiyomi, the teleportation technique Kamui, and the massive chakra avatar Susano. Each of these techniques seem miraculous, but to drive the point home, just about all techniques, in fact, are named after Shinto gods. Amaterasu is the sun goddess, Susano the god of storms, Tsukiyomi god of the moon, and even Kamui, which literally means authority of the gods. We further move down to the Sharingan. The Sharingan itself doesn't seem to be overly miraculous at first glance, but the abilities Izanagi and Izanami both are techniques that can completely alter fate and reality, one by refusing fate and the other by forcing one to accept it. Both of these techniques are considered some of the most powerful techniques of the Sharingan. So with this massive monologue out of the way, I will pose a most simple question. What if Naruto was born with the Sharingan? So pull up a chair, if you haven't already, and you likely have, else your feet are hurting, and enjoy a new what if centering around our boy Naruto having one of those three great dojutsu. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, be sure to check and see if you're still subscribed. YouTube has been unsubscribing people lately for whatever reason, and we just want to make sure that you don't miss out on any more of our videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. So, Naruto has Sharingan. How did this happen? Well, I don't really know. Perhaps Minato has Senju blood in his veins. Maybe he's distantly connected to the Sage of Six Paths. At birth, Naruto comes out and, you know, he's got a Sharingan, which is weird as hell to Minato and Kushina. But, you know, they get over it eventually, coming up with some headcanon excuse for it, just as we all likely have by now. Most of the series, to a point, remains the same. Kushina and Minato get their buckets Omega kicked by Kurama, who wants to free himself, but instead he's split in half and sealed into Naruto. Naruto, like most, is hated, but this isn't because he's the Ninetales only, but because he has the cursed Sharingan, forming a question on if he was possibly from the Uchiha clan, the clan somewhat blamed for the attack in the first place. Naruto was isolated and tended to play pranks to gain any form of acknowledgement from those around him, generally which led him to being punished for what he had done. Despite Minato's greatest wishes, Hiruzen had failed. Eventually, Naruto ends up witnessing a group of bullies doing the same as their namesake implies, bullying Hinata Hyuga because they think her eyes look weird. But Naruto comes in and demands that they stop. Of course, they beat him up and rip his scarf, but in the end, Naruto teaches them a lesson by using his Sharingan to cast them under a Genjutsu. He then finds Hinata and talks to her and found out that she was feeling self-conscious about her Byakugan. But looking at her eyes with his own Sharingan active, he tells her that he thinks her eyes are pretty. And seeing that, she begins to feel more confident, and the first seeds of a crush begin to form in the heart of Hinata. Naruto would continue going to the academy. This results in Naruto meeting Sasuke, and the two attempt to become friends. Naruto and Sasuke eventually bond over the fact that they're the only two people in the village to possess the Sharingan. As for the rivalry between the two, they wouldn't really have one that strong. When it comes down to Naruto needing to use the clone jutsu to form the perfect clone, he manages to do so perfectly the first time, not requiring the scroll Mizuki would normally tell him about to succeed. Naruto is excited to finally be a genin and be well on his way to become the Hokage. Much like before, he ends up on the same team as Sasuke and Sakura. When the bell test occurs, Naruto is not afraid to display his Sharingan to beat Kakashi, which Kakashi is surprised to see, but at the same time he would be pleased as Naruto is displaying that he's truly taking Kakashi seriously. Sasuke would display his Sharingan early as well, which would lead to them working well with each other. Not really teamwork per se, but more like trying to outdo each other and using the other's failed advances to push their own forward. In the end, Team 7 manages to complete the bell test as they normally would, and of course they'd continue on, Naruto complaining about the lack of action until Hiruzen finally gives in and hands them a mission with a little action. He offers them the mission to the Land of Waves, tasking them with guarding the bridge builder Tazuna as he makes his way towards his home village 
bridge to complete the bridge that'll connect the land of waves to the mainland, but little do they know what they're getting into. On their way there, they're stopped by two shinobi mercenaries known as the Demon Brothers. Naruto is startled, but due to his Sharingan, he quickly recovers and manages to defeat them with the help of Sasuke. Kakashi makes note of something when he sees this. He states that Geni normally go on D-rank missions and that this was a C-rank exception. The issue with this is that with the appearance of assassins, the rank of this goes up. He questions Tazuna, who reveals that he knew about it, but he couldn't afford any shinobi of higher rank. Kakashi considers going back to the village, but instead decides against it and continues on. During their way there, they also encounter Zabuza. Kakashi attempts to confront him, and in doing so, he reveals that he also has a Sharingan. Sakura is feeling left out now. This doesn't really alter the way that the battle goes, as Naruto and Sasuke didn't even use it in this battle anyway, so the fact that they have them shouldn't change the outcome. And so, they manage to defeat Zabuza, but only for him to be fake unalived by Haku pretending to be a hunter nin. The battle's over, but it's not without its own costs. Kakashi, through overuse of his Sharingan, which he is not naturally accustomed to like Naruto and Sasuke, is left weakened by the use and must rest, and so he ends up resting in Tazuna's home. It's there that Naruto and Sasuke, along with Sakura, begin to train. Naruto still has a hard time learning to properly control his chakra, never seemingly adding enough, and Sasuke is having a hard time because he adds too much. Naruto and Sasuke train themselves until they puke, and then they train some more. Inari is disgusted by it all, and Naruto pulls no punches against the kid, making him cry. Then they're told the story of how Inari's father saved him from drowning, and how they had seen him as a hero, and finally how Gato had killed him for the same, to make a symbol out of him. It was up to Kakashi to make things right with Inari. Naruto's out there still training, and eventually passes out from exhaustion in the forest. It's the next day that he would meet Haku, who he had assumed might have been a girl due to the fairness of his face and the fashion he was wearing. It's to his surprise to find that the opposite is true. They have a nice conversation about their beliefs and dreams before parting ways. Eventually, Naruto's training leaves him in bed to oversleep during a mission. Kakashi decides to let him sleep as he's improving on his skills and thinks that Naruto could use the break to rest. After all, what could go wrong? As they're out guarding the bridge workers, suddenly they're attacked by Haku and Zabuza. Kakashi, of course, takes on Zabuza, and Sasuke takes on Haku all by himself, ending up caught in the demonic mirroring ice crystals technique. Naruto, having awakened from sleep, realizes that he needs to get out of there to find his friends, and on his way out, foils the attempted kidnapping of Inari and Tsunami. Now, there are two possibilities here for how this goes down. The first is that Naruto sees the trap, his Sharingan activates, and he suddenly stops outside before going in, where he proceeds to help Sasuke from the outside, likely in a futile manner. Still, with Naruto out of the way, Sasuke doesn't receive a mortal wound. They outlast Haku's attack as Kakashi finishes Zabuza. Now, the second way that this could go is that Naruto jumps into the trap anyways, regardless of if he had his Sharingan active or if he had not noticed it yet. In this scenario, Naruto ends up within the mirrors, but isn't quite as bad of a burden on Sasuke, also possessing Sharingan, so Naruto can likely dodge most of the dangerous Senbon, resulting in the two outlasting the attack until Kakashi defeats Zabuza. Now, if Haku is too busy focusing on Sasuke and Naruto, I wonder how he would fare in saving Zabuza. Would he even notice the Chidori? And if he did, would he be fast enough to intervene? If not, and Zabuza dies, then what does this mean for Haku? What would he do next? Well, it's possible he becomes a loner, that he goes about attempting to continue life as a mercenary. Perhaps he returns to the Hidden Mist in an attempt to overthrow Yagata and take his place as the fifth Mizukage. He likely wouldn't succeed, but on the off chance that he somehow managed to do so, his compassion would change the Hidden Mist for the better. He would also likely offer protections to any persons possessing a Kekai Genkai to stop discrimination and hate crimes against such parties. All in all, Haku would make one heck of a Mizukage, and so because I'm feeling generous today, I'll say that after Yagata loses his tailed beast and position as Kage, Haku takes over. And in the end, the bridge is named the Frost Angel Bridge, in reference to the fair-looking warrior who so gracefully freed them from Gato's control with his mirrors of ice. All would return to the Leaf, successful in their mission. Upon returning, Naruto and friends would be met by Konohamaru and his little squad. That is, before the Sand siblings show up. For the most part, this remains the same, though. Gara calls off his own siblings, telling them to forget them and follow him. After this, it's revealed that Naruto and the rest of Team 7 would go on to enter the Chunin exams as part of the Rookie 9. Before they enter though, they are stopped by Rock Lee who wishes to face off against Sasuke of the Uchiha clan. Naruto is jealous though and he attempts to attack him anyway, but is brushed aside like loose dirt. Sasuke attempts to duel but almost gets his coconut rung by Lee's front lotus. Lee is stopped by Guy and Sasuke gets out scot-free. They sign up and join the Chunin exams officially. 
The first test is a written exam, and this time even Naruto starts getting all the answers right, specifically because he also uses his Sharingan much like Sasuke. And given that he's the gutsiest ninja in the room, he also takes the final question like a pog champ, and this results in him succeeding and going on to the second stage. In this stage, it's basically a game of capture the flag, but it possesses multiple teams and multiple flags. Team 7 enters the forest, and of course Naruto has to pee. And while he's away, he's impersonated by another shinobi. But thanks to Sasuke's great perception, they see through the disguise and drive him off. Naruto returns, and after a moment of suspicion, they continue. They would eventually be targeted by Orochimaru. Normally, Naruto gets eaten here, but not so. He instead avoids the snake entirely with his Sharingan. He attempts to stop Sasuke from giving up the scroll and succeeds, though Sasuke is still bitten by Orochimaru and passes out. They manage to drive off Orochimaru, and both Naruto and Sakura manage to hold off Team Dosu until Sasuke wakes up and rips a guy's arms out of their sockets, and takes the scrolls for themselves before making their way to the tower in the center. After this comes the preliminaries, or the exhibition matches. Most, if not all of this, stays exactly the same. That is, until Naruto faces off against Kiba and Akamaru. In this, due to possessing the Sharingan, Naruto's victory is a bit more honorable. After this, though, they get a month off to rest and train. Naruto begins training under Ebisu. That is, until they find a disturbance at a bathhouse in which an older man is seen stalking the women inside. Now, here's an important piece of information. Naruto does not yet know that he's the Ninetales Jinchuriki. The issue also crops up that Naruto has never awakened the Ninetales chakra before, not even subconsciously, so he needs to learn how to do that first and foremost. But besides these two things, Naruto would likely train faster if he does manage to awaken the Ninetales energy, and that can be specifically linked to the fact that he possesses a Sharingan. Imagine if Naruto could just turn on that thing every time he entered his own subconscious? He would never be able to befriend Kurama, but then again, he wouldn't need to. All he would need to do is cast it under a Genjutsu, and suddenly it's under his complete and utter control. So, with the fact that Naruto actually has a means and the ability to control Kurama without Kurama having a say in it, Naruto actually becomes suddenly busted. So Naruto returns to the Chunin exams where he faces off against Neji Hyuga in the Battle of the Three Great Dojutsu. Naruto is pitting his Sharingan against Neji's Byakugan. Neji's Dojutsu is better for accuracy, but has no known Genjutsu techniques. Naruto's Dojutsu can use Genjutsu, but lacks the same kind of accuracy. Nonetheless, with the Ninetales version 1 Chakra Cloak, Naruto manages to defeat Neji. Sasuke has similar successes against Gara, but before the battle can end, it's interrupted by the Konoha Crush, which results in Orochimaru killing 3rd Hokage Hiruzen in Saratobi, and nearly devastating the village. Naruto and Sasuke chase after Gara, but are caught fighting against Shukaku, the One Tail. Naruto summons Gamabunta, and with his help, he manages to beat Gara. This costs a lot of chakra, though, and both Naruto and Sasuke are admitted to the hospital. After the burial of Hiruzen, both Naruto and Jiraiya are selected to venture out to find Tsunade. While doing so, however, Itachi and Kisame, two of our favorite members of the Akatsuki, enter the village. There, they search for Naruto and manage to put Kakashi under Genjutsu when he attempts to stop them. Sasuke would discover this and race to catch up with the party, but is too late when he finds Naruto already cornered. However, Jiraiya arrives to save him. Itachi then breaks Sasuke's wrist and pushes him against the wall, giving birth to a whole new format of meme, and puts him under an infinite Tsukiyomi. Not that this technique is actually the infinite Tsukiyomi, but it might as well be for Sasuke, due to the length of time that he's forced to witness this dream. Might Guy shows up though and saves the day. Eventually, Naruto and Jiraiya locate Tsunade, but it's revealed that Orochimaru is after her as well in hopes that she'll heal his hands, which here is in horribly mangled up as his final up yours to Orochimaru before death. Tsunade is asked to come back to the Leaf to become the next Hokage, but she mocks the office to their faces, which heavily offends Naruto, resulting in a duel between the two. Tsunade easily wins, but she offers a new type of challenge. She tells him to learn how to use the Rasengan in one week, and if he can accomplish this, she'll give him the first Hokage's necklace. In the end though, Tsunade decides to meet with Orochimaru, but her plan is to kill him, not heal him. A battle erupts between Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Naruto, versus Orochimaru and his subordinate Kabuto. Kabuto manages to sever Naruto's chakra pathways as well as his heart muscles, but Tsunade heals him and he lands a decisive blow against Kabuto using the Rasengan, earning him the Hokage's necklace. After defeating Orochimaru and Kabuto, Tsunade agrees to follow them back to Konoha to become the next Hokage. Meanwhile, Sasuke stews over his defeat, after both he and Kakashi's minds are healed by Tsunade. It's then that the Sound 4 show up and beat Sasuke senseless before offering him an easy way out. Sasuke takes it and leaves the village to train with Orochimaru. 
The next day, a squad is formed to recover Sasuke, among which is Naruto. They leave and end up facing off against the Sound 4. Jirobo fights Choji, Toyuya faces Shikamaru, Kiba and Akamaru face off against Sakon and Ukon, and finally Naruto faces off against Kimimaro, but he's quickly relieved from battle due to the sudden appearance of the newly recovered Rock Lee, who manages to hold his own against Kimimaro once Gara arrives. Naruto chases after the newly awakened Sasuke to the Valley of the End, where Sasuke reveals his new form, the second stage curse mark. Naruto tries to talk Sasuke down, but there's no changing his mind. Naruto awakens his version 1 chakra cloak and the two fight, both fighting so hard and so intent on accomplishing their goals that both their Sharingan immediately mature to three Tomoe. The battle is close, but due to killing intent, Sasuke pulls ahead and claims victory, though he spares Naruto and then returns to Orochimaru. Naruto and the rest of their team are rescued and admitted to the hospital to recover. After their recovery, Naruto decides to set out with Jiraiya, and they explore the various advantages and disadvantages of a Sharingan user possessing a tailed beast. The advantages are that Naruto, with enough training in Genjutsu from Gamariki, can cast a strong enough Genjutsu through the Sharingan to completely take control of Kurama and bend it to its will in a way that even Madara Uchiha would find impressive. As for the downsides, there are none. At best, I could say that Naruto would never truly befriend Kurama. In fact, this would put a large strain on their relationship. And as for the practicality of this, I would need to take Naruto's personality into account here and wonder if Naruto would really ever use such a technique on Kurama often. I mean, I don't think it would stop Naruto from using it, but I certainly think he'd feel bad about it, and this would be the thing he would choose to do. That being said, through his training, Naruto quickly picks up many concepts and abilities from Jiraiya, and by the time he returns to the village, Naruto has complete control over his tailed beast via the Sharingan. This actually changes a lot. Naruto would return to the village along with Jiraiya, and his power would have skyrocketed. And this would be evident when he does the bell test with Sakura and Kakashi, coming so close in base mode only to get the bells from Kakashi. Of course, Kakashi would maintain the upper hand, but only so long as Naruto remains in base form, which he does due to having a sense of fairness. Naruto and what is left of Team 7 would take some time to catch up and do a few missions together, most of which Naruto complains about. It isn't long until word comes down from Tsunade that the Kazakage Gara has been captured and is in danger. Naruto, Kakashi, and Sakura are commissioned to rescue him, and so they make their way to Sunagakure. When they arrive there, they find Konkuro has been mortally wounded by the Akatsuki member known as Sasori. To save his life, Sakura devises a plan to cure him using a piece of Sasori's clothes left in one of Konkuro's puppets. While this goes down, Tsunade scrambles Team Guy to help Team Kakashi, but both teams are derailed by the sudden appearance of Itachi and Kisame. In the end, most of Team Guy is defeated, though the Jonin of which the team is named after manages to come out on top with the use of his Morning Peacock technique. This defeats Kisame, but it's revealed that the Akatsuki member was merely an imposter. Sus. The same is true for Itachi after he's defeated. Realizing that this was merely a ploy, Naruto pulls out the full power of his Nine Tails Chakra Mode and rushes out, meeting up with Team Guy, all of whom manage to break down the barrier. Naruto single-handedly destroys the clones created by the failsafe and manages to get in and stop Sasori and Daedara, though they manage to get away with one half of the One Tail. Daedara manages to escape, but Sasori is killed. This results in the survival of Gara due to Naruto's quick intervention, though Shukaku is essentially cleaved in two. Think of it like the concept of Yin and Yang Kurama, but it's Shukaku. This actually gives Gara a little bit of a power boost, and also means that Chiyo survives. Through the defeat of Sasori though, it's revealed that he was originally planning to meet with Kabuto at the Tenchi Bridge, as it turns out that Kabuto is Sasori's double agent with Orochimaru. They end up returning to the village after bidding Suna farewell and return to Konoha. Due to never needing to reveal his Mongekyo Sharingan, Kakashi never needs time to recover after this mission. This means that Kakashi leads Team 7 on their way to the Tenchi Bridge instead of Yamato. But if you think this changes anything, it doesn't really. Orochimaru is still stronger than Kakashi, but you know who he isn't stronger than? Naruto. Naruto, pulling out all the stops to get his friends back, would use Ninetales Chakra Mode and would absolutely body both Kabuto and Orochimaru. He would demand that they lead him to Sasuke, and wouldn't you know it, the fear of death is just what's needed to motivate Orochimaru and Kabuto to do just that. They lead him back. Of course, it is Sai's mission to kill Sasuke, but at this point, whether he's been convinced by their love for their friend to save him or not, there is no way he's killing Sasuke. Not with Naruto there. But as we all know, Orochimaru is a snake in the grass. If you think that he's going to go down quietly without any resistance, then you're as crazy as can be. He leads them in, but immediately lets off a trap. Likely a bomb of some sort that brings the whole place down while he escapes with Kabuto and Sasuke. 
They're forced to return to Konoha empty-handed. While there, the village begins taking more of an interest into destroying the Akatsuki after the attack on Suna. The Akatsuki's various activities have led to them entering the global spotlight as a legitimate threat to peace and safety, and so Konoha mobilizes many of its best warriors in response. Team Asuma would be one of these, and that, as you know, does not go well. Hidan casts his spell over Asuma and ends up transferring damage to him as Hidan gives himself fatal wounds. In the end, Asuma perishes due to this, and Naruto and Kakashi enter the hunt. Naruto at this time would not need to learn Rasen Shuriken due to the fact that he's already pretty much the strongest shinobi in the village, especially due to the fact that he's completely mastered the Ninetales energy. Naruto would go out, and in a battle against Kakazu, he basically solos him. I would assume he gets the same fate, as even if Naruto were there to stop Hidan, he might not, just to give Shikamaru the chance at his revenge. In the end, Shikamaru still gets it, but it's during this time that a few things happen. Jiraiya leaves Konoha under orders of Tsunade to enter Amegakure and investigate it, as the rumors fly that Ame is the home of the Akatsuki. Jiraiya has a hard time getting in, but he manages, and he then further investigates, interrogating members of the Shinobi forces there on what they know of the Akatsuki. He comes to learn that the one he barely survived in the Shinobi World War, Hanzo of the Salamander, was completely defeated in a coup and murdered by a man using only the alias of Pain. This eventually leads Jiraiya into confrontation with the man known as Pain, facing off against the Six Paths. In the end, despite Jiraiya's strength and experience, he still fails to defeat the Six Paths. This leads to his death. However, he sends a message to Naruto. At the same time, word has reached Konoha that Orochimaru was killed by Sasuke, who had nothing left to learn from him, and had absorbed his remains. From there, Sasuke plans to find Itachi and kill him. Tsunade dispatches a squad to find Itachi first and apprehend Sasuke, and among these would naturally be Naruto. Naruto would encounter Itachi, who doesn't seem interested in fighting him, but instead asks him a few questions, such as if he would be willing to kill Sasuke should he turn against Konoha. And Naruto's response regarding his determination to save both Sasuke and Konoha pleases the ailing Akatsuki member, who bequeaths him a strange bird with a Sharingan. Itachi would then disappear. He would await at the designated place for Sasuke. As he enters, the two begin a duel with Genjutsu before slowly transitioning to Taijutsu. Things escalate as they incorporate Ninjutsu and apparently Chinjutsu as Itachi hits Sasuke with a Matarasu, but this ends with Sasuke shedding his skin, an ability he gained from Orochimaru. Sasuke attempts to use his Kirin technique. He uses it, but Itachi survives it through use of his Susano. Sasuke uses his last resort, giving in to Orochimaru who uses his Eight Branches technique. This, however, is also countered by Itachi's Blade of Tatsuka, which strikes Orochimaru and seals him away. This leaves Sasuke out of chakra and vulnerable. However, before Itachi could finish him off, and even if he could, he wouldn't have, Itachi falls over dead. It's here that Sasuke is taken by Tobi after he also passes out. Tobi explains to Sasuke the truth behind Itachi's story, and how he was doing everything under Konoha's threats and orders, and had never betrayed Sasuke. This realization causes Sasuke's eyes to immediately awaken as Mongekyo Sharingan. He then vows revenge against the leaf. Naruto, on the other hand, is now just being called into the Hokage's office, where he's informed that sadly Jiraiya had been killed in action. This realization, and knowing that he wasn't there for his mentor when he needed him most, strikes Naruto hard. Having never known a father until now, he's just lost him. All this causes Naruto's Sharingan to awaken as Mongekyo Sharingan as well, something he doesn't understand. Kakashi takes him aside and informs him what it means, and not to overuse it if he wants to keep seeing things. Naruto would then help decipher the secret code. My question is whether Naruto would be asked to go to Mount Myoboku to train with the sages or not. It's possible that he would be due to the fact that he was close to Jiraiya. So Naruto goes to train with the Toad Sages and Masters Sage Mode, but it's then that Pain attacks the village. Most of that happens the same as it would normally until Naruto returns to Konoha. The village is decimated, many people are killed, and Tsunade is comatosified. Naruto returns, and he absolutely obliterates the Six Paths. Using Ninetales Chakra Mode as well as Sage Mode, Naruto simply rips these Six Paths apart. He uses barely zero effort to topple D.Va as well. In the end, he finds Nagato and Konin, and due to Naruto really preserving much of his personality, he likely Takno Jutsus him out of his evil ways, causing Nagato to revive everyone in Konoha at the expense of his own life. Naruto is then hailed as a hero, but not all is well. Tsunade is in a coma, and Sakura is doing a lot of crying. Danzo is chosen to be the interim Hokage until her recovery, though he already plans to name himself an official Hokage. The Five Kage Summit is called, and so Danzo goes. Naruto attempts to convince the Raikage to permit Sasuke a form of amnesty, but he fails miserably. 
As the summit begins, we are shown two very contrasting sides. Three of the Kage are old men, Danzo, A, and Onoki. The other two are basically teenagers, Gara of the Hidden Sand and the current Mizukage, Haku of the Hidden Mist. As they discuss things, it's known that Sasuke is attacking the summit. Toby appears, demanding the Nine Tails, the Eight Tails, and the remnants of the One Tail. Upon being rejected, he declares war, and then suddenly Sasuke shows up in the room. The various Kage attempt to fight or escape. Haku attempts to use his demonic mirroring ice crystals on him just as he did in the past, and Gara tries to talk him off the dark path, having found himself there once before. In the end though, the one he's really here for is Danzo. Danzo, many times, escapes death through use of Izanagi, and Sasuke himself escapes death through the help of Karin, who shares her healing chakra with him through getting bitten. In the end, Danzo runs out of Sharingan with which to use Izanagi and begins quickly regretting having misused Kodama Tsukami earlier to get the role of leader of the allied shinobi forces, having failed miserably. He takes Karin hostage, but Sasuke, the cold, badass bastard he is, sacrifices her for his revenge, stabbing her along with Danzo, who perishes, attempting one last-ditch effort to drag Sasuke down with him via a hidden seal. Naruto and Kakashi arrive after Sakura to defend her after she fails to assassinate Sasuke. In the end, Naruto and Sasuke have to face off, both surprised at the other having acquired the Mangekyo Sharingan. They begin to duel using their Susanoo. Sasuke's purple Susanoo facing off against Naruto's orange one. In the end, Sasuke is forced to flee, as he's used his Mangekyo Sharingan far more than Naruto has, as this was technically the first time Naruto had used it, and Sasuke is already beginning to go blind from overuse. Sasuke would then demand to have Itachi's Sharingan transplanted into his head to gain the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. From there, they decide to send Naruto away for training to hide him from the Akatsuki while the war happens. The five shinobi world powers begin to mobilize, but the moment the fighting starts, Naruto senses it, and he and Killer B leave the island to join the battle. There, he faces off against Itachi and Nagato. The crow inside of Naruto is used to free Itachi from Kabuto's control. Itachi then seals away Nagato and proceeds on his way to find and stop Kabuto. Naruto also manages to use his ability to sense emotions to find the hidden Zetsu in the allied shinobi forces ranks. And especially because I just want to show what happens with Haku, I would say that he'd likely find Zabuza and would duel with him. Haku would be angered to see what they're doing to Zabuza, as this is defacing his body and disrespectful to who he was. Haku would, however, prove that he's stronger than Zabuza and reveal that he overthrew Yagura and became the next Mizukage. After seeing Haku's strength, Zabuza would let go of all the troubles anchoring him to this world and would return to the afterlife. In the end, everyone gathers at what would be the final battleground, and this is where things begin to even out. Naruto would be stronger for the duration of this battle against Obito, but when it comes down to it, that strength means nothing, as what really made Obito a threat was his ability to spam Kamui to give himself invulnerability via intangibility. Once Kakashi figures it out, they manage to beat him and things even out on the power side of it. From here, things begin to go the same way, except Naruto can now coat his tailed beast mode in Susano all by himself, which normally he'd need Sasuke for. In the end, Naruto and Sasuke both manage to defeat Tobi. However, when Madara appears, he attempts to take the tailed beasts out of everyone. Killer B survives due to the eight tails leaving him with a tentacle before being removed. Naruto and Gara die though from having their tailed beasts removed. Madara then takes over the world. The end. Or so you'd expect, but Naruto has a way out of this. Upon his death, he sacrifices the sight in one of his eyes by using the Izanagi. He no longer has Kurama within him, but he is alive. But the blindness doesn't last as Naruto and Sasuke both are contacted by the Sage of Six Paths, who grants them some of his chakra, allowing them to gain Senjutsu Chakra, causing them to both form a Rinnegan in one of their eyes and allowing Naruto to also get Six Path Sage Mode. Naruto, having awakened from his Six Path Sage Mode, would view the aftermath of the battle between Six Paths Madara and Eight Gates Might Guy. He would heal Might Guy, and I would see Minato transferring half of Kurama into Naruto in an attempt to allow his son the best chance possible to beat Madara. But eventually Madara would cast the infinite Tsukiyomi, and Naruto and Sasuke shield their friends with their Susanoo and the power of their Rinnegan. But they don't get to worry about Madara for long, as he's quickly replaced with Kaguya Otsutsuki who proceeds to attempt to reclaim all of her lost chakra. Sasuke and Naruto would chase her through multiple dimensions. Now, let me just say this. If Naruto and Sasuke could beat her in Shippuden, why wouldn't an upgraded version of them be able to? So yeah, they basically beat her faster than before. They quickly seal her away, and the war ends. Due to how everyone was forced to work together to end this threat, the five great shinobi superpowers gain mutual respect, and peace returns to the world. 
But don't think that this is the end of the story, because you'll also have Taneri Otsutsuki appear and attempt to flatten the world Majora's Mask style by flinging the moon at them. But this is a personal crisis for Naruto, the Leaf, and the Hyuga clan, as Hanabi and later Hinata are held captive by the blind Otsutsuki, who decides to take Hanabi's eyes. To Taneri's credit, he did promise to return them later, but only after he'd used them to kill off all people and animals on Earth by bowling a perfect 8 billion with his brand new bowling ball. Still, to a point, I never really saw Teneri as a true villain, more like a guy lost in dogmatic views. I also feel like Teneri's lack of eyes is not just physical, but symbolic, as he doesn't see what he's doing wrong, as he's blinded by his own clan's dogmatic views, which were misinterpretations of Hamura's will. Wow. Boom. I just blew my own mind there. Anyway, Naruto shows up and kicks his ass because he's Naruto. He's the hero of the leaf and the main protag. If he didn't, the world ends. So Naruto beats Teneri and steals his girl. Years later, Naruto is a father and finally the Hokage. But happiness doesn't last long as Naruto has to deal with the Otsutsuki once more in the form of Kinshiki and Momoshiki. But with the help of the other Kage, as well as his own son and Sasuke, he manages to supplant them, though his son ends up the unwilling recipient of the Kama Seal. He later must face Ishiki Otsutsuki, and all things being said, considering that Naruto now has a Rinnegan, I really wonder if he would need Baryon mode to deal with them. Naruto might actually be able to pull this out without sacrificing Kurama. That would have been awesome, but then again, Naruto would just steal the spotlight again, and the Boruto series would change its name to Naruto Part 3 but I suppose there are many fans out there who wouldn't mind that. But I digress. Anyway, what do you think? Naruto with the Sharingan would be pretty OP. Logically, with that dojutsu, he would be able to control Kurama without any effort at all, as Kurama seems to have a weakness for dojutsu in the line of the Rinnegan. But I want to hear what you think. Do you believe it would go like this? And if not, what do you think would happen? I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell if you want to see more content like this. Peace out.